It's kind of surreal being back here just thinking about it did happen like right around this area and I haven't been on the track since then. So. Caleb Perkins is a Revere High School speedster. He feels at home on the track where it seemed nothing could slow him down. But on the afternoon of March 18th, Caleb's life would hang in the balance, a day he has no memory of. I have no idea what happened that day. Caleb had just finished a very tough workout, repeat quarters, sprinting one lap around the track. After the last one, he told a teammate he felt tight and moments later collapsed right about here at the finish line. Is he conscious? Uh, no, he's not. He's not responding. It was sudden cardiac arrest and time for life or death decisions. Assistant coach Brian Rayson struggled to find a pulse. Head coach Lyle Kniep dialed 911. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. Caleb. That's when I started administering CPR. Was he conscious at all? Uh, no, no, he was unresponsive. The coaches yelled for trainers who made the crucial choice to grab an AED and start shocking Caleb's heart. Okay, this this is the moment. Paramedics arrived. Dealer shock delivered. Used an AED again and rushed Caleb to the hospital. His coaches left to wonder, did they do enough to save the boy? Well. I mean, that was, you know, my whole concern at that point was, was for Caleb's family, his mo mother and father. It was really scary. They were talking about a transplant at first. No heart transplant needed, but Caleb spent 19 days at the Cleveland Clinic, where doctors told his family the rapid response by coaches, trainers, and the AED saved his life. We realize how blessed we are that he has a chance to live because we heard the statistics over and over. He should not be alive. It's just... 5%. It was kind of a perfect storm of things where everybody kind of came together for Caleb. Doctors found scarring at the bottom of Caleb's heart, diagnosed him with cardiomyopathy, and a defibrillator was implanted in his chest to keep his heart in rhythm. For now, no sports for the Revere athlete, but he's promising to get back on this track, grateful for his second chance at life. I'm not usually somebody who takes no for an answer, so I'm going to fight. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get back out there as soon as possible. In Bath, Bob Jones, News Channel 5. My name is Deborah Moore. I'm Senior Director for Compliance and Sport Medicine for the Ohio High School Athletic Association. It's our pleasure, in partnership with the Ohio Department of Health and the Department of Education, along with the Ohio Chapter of the American College of Cardiology and Nationwide Children's Hospital, to provide this educational video to our parents and young athletes on the topic of sudden cardiac arrest, which is the leading cause of death in young athletes of this age. So welcome. Whether you or your child is participating in an athletic activity organized by your school or by a group in your community, it is our goal that you will find this video useful and informative. Hello. My name is Dr. Naomi Cortez, and I am the Associate Medical Director of Pediatric Cardiology and Electrophysiology at Nationwide Children's Hospital. I'm also the Medical Director of Project Adam Ohio. What is a sudden cardiac arrest? A sudden cardiac arrest occurs when the heart suddenly and unexpectedly stops beating, cutting off all blood flow to the brain and other vital organs. Sudden cardiac arrest is fatal if not treated immediately, most often by a defibrillator. What causes sudden cardiac arrest? The causes of sudden cardiac arrest can be divided into three categories. First, structural heart disease. This may or may not be present from birth and therefore is not excluded with one evaluation. Second, electrical heart disease. This occurs when the heart is formed normally, but there is a problem with the electrical system that controls the heartbeat. And third is situational. Situational causes include individuals who have completely normal hearts, but then either are hit in the chest with an object or develop an infection of the heart, causing a sudden cardiac arrest. Your family history can be an important warning sign of a high risk of a sudden cardiac arrest. Family history of premature death, sudden and unexpected, before age 50, because of heart disease in one or more relatives is concerning. Also be aware 
that sudden cardiac death may manifest as a suspicious drowning or a single car accident. One should think about the presence of a disability from heart disease in close relatives younger than 50. Family history of the following conditions may put your child at risk of sudden cardiac arrest. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a thick heart, or dilated cardiomyopathy, a big heart, long QT syndrome, Marfan syndrome, or other rhythm problems of the heart. Certain symptoms can be warning signs of an impending sudden cardiac arrest. These symptoms should prompt you to have your child evaluated by a healthcare professional. They include one, chest pain or discomfort with exercise, two, unexplained fainting or near fainting, especially during or immediately after exercise. Fainting from dehydration does not typically occur during exercise. Three, unexplained tiredness or shortness of breath with exercise, and four, unusually fast heartbeats associated with exercise. Other reasons to be evaluated by a healthcare professional would be prior recognition of a heart murmur, high blood pressure, or prior heart evaluation by a physician. I'm Dr. Peter Aziz, a pediatric cardiologist here at the Cleveland Clinic. Despite everyone's best efforts, sometimes a young athlete will experience a sudden cardiac arrest. For those of you who have had any CPR training, you may recognize the term chain of survival. These are the links in the chain to help anyone survive a cardiac arrest. Depending on where a young athlete is participating in an activity, you may or may not have close access to an automated external defibrillator, or AED. Many, but not all, schools have AEDs. They may be near the athletic facility or may be close to the school office. Be aware of where you see them when you're at a sporting event. Many of you are not involved in school sports, but are involved in community sports. Take a look around to see if there are AEDs nearby. To review the chain of survival, if you witness a youth experiencing a sudden cardiac arrest, first remain calm. Panic and chaos are never helpful in these situations. The links to the chain of survival are, one, early recognition. Assess the child for responsiveness. Does the child answer if you call his or her name? If no, then attempt to assess a pulse. If no pulse is felt or if you're unsure, call help, say someone dial 911. Two, early CPR. Begin CPR immediately. Three, early defibrillation, which is the use of an AED. If an AED is available, send somebody to get it. Turn it on, attach it to the child, and follow the prompts or instructions. If an AED is not available, continue CPR until EMS arrives. Four, early advanced life support and cardiovascular care. Continue CPR until EMS arrives. Remember to trade places with other providers if available so that you don't tire. We were doing good. My wife, myself, my oldest son, Seth, who's 15. My youngest son, Cole, is 13. Cole was getting ready to have a uh, physical for football. And a heart murmur was detected via our family care provider. She immediately sent us to have further testing done. After all kinds of testing was done, it was determined he has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, changed our lives in a major way no longer could play football, no longer could play baseball, no longer, no longer could drive a race car, nothing with high intensity exercise. Um, what we found he could do is play golf, which was totally cool as far as his care provider was concerned. Um, he was allowed to do this, it's not a high energy sport, um, it does keep him relatively fit, no issues, no problems. We were at his training facility on the north side of Columbus, just beginning a training program and he went down. I saw him go down. Very scary. His instructor and I were there. She was monitoring his heart rate. He had a heartbeat, a pulse. It was okay to start with, and it became more and more faint. We decided it was time to get the AED. Uh, fortunately, 
when Cole was diagnosed with this disease, we were able via sources within our family to get an AED, our own personal one. I got the AED, we got it hooked up to him, and it shocked him. This little machine saved my son's life. If it wasn't for that, he wouldn't be here today. He was rushed to a children's hospital. The next day he had surgery to have an ICD implanted. So now he has his own onboard ICD to where hopefully this won't ever happen again. But if it does, he's taken care of. Please encourage your schools, your coaches, your athletic facilities, all of those type of folks to ensure that they've got AEDs present, that they have personnel that are trained and knowledgeable, um, that they've taken and done drills, that they know what they will do if a bad situation ever arises. Because a 90% fatality rate with cardiac arrest is simply unacceptable. My name is Ann Conley, and I'm a licensed school nurse working at the Ohio Department of Health. Lindsay's Law was named for Lindsay Davis, who was crowned Miss Ohio U.S. International in 2011. She had been a classically trained ballerina until a diagnosis of the heart condition hypertrophic cardiomyopathy ended her dream at the age of 17. Moving on, Lindsay developed a platform to support and bring awareness to cardiac-related charities and causes. What is Lindsay's Law? Lindsay's Law went into effect in 2017 to address sudden cardiac arrest in youth athletic activities. Youth covered under Lindsay's Law are all youth athletes 19 years of age or younger that wish to practice for or compete in athletic activities organized by a school or youth sports organization. Lindsay's Law is effective in all public and non-public schools in Ohio as well as athletic activities, including interscholastic athletics, any athletic contest or competition sponsored by or associated with a school. This includes cheerleading, club sports, and school-affiliated organizations, including non-competitive cheerleading. It includes all practices, interschool practices, and scrimmages. It's also in effect for all youth sports organizations, which are public or non-public entities that organize athletic activities for athletes aged 19 years or younger, where they pay a fee to participate or are sponsored by a business or nonprofit organization. Lindsay's Law requires all youth athletes and their parents or guardians to review information about sudden cardiac arrest that is provided by the Ohio Departments of Health and Education. This video and accompanying handouts are the required information. After reviewing the information, both the youth athlete and the parent guardian will need to sign a form that says you have received this information. You will need to do this each year for each athletic activity in which the young athlete participates. My name is Joanne Keith and I am a licensed school nurse working at the Ohio Department of Health. Before they participate in an athletic activity, all athletes under the age of 19 years and their parents must sign and submit a form saying they have received information about sudden cardiac arrest. If the young athlete has ever had fainting or passed out before, during or after athletic activity, then the youth must be evaluated and cleared before participation. The same is true if the youth's biological parent, sibling, or child has had a sudden cardiac arrest. Until those steps are taken, a young athlete cannot participate in practices, interschool practices, scrimmages, or competition in their athletic activity. During an athletic activity, if the athlete faints or passes out, the coach must remove him or her from participation. The youth may not return until cleared by a health care provider in writing. Lindsay's Law lists the health care professionals who may evaluate and clear youth athletes either before participation or if they have been removed from play. 
If a young athlete needs to be evaluated, they can visit a physician, a certified nurse practitioner, a clinical nurse specialist, a certified nurse midwife, physician's assistant, or licensed athletic trainer. That person may refer the youth and family to another healthcare provider, such as a cardiologist, for further evaluation. Clearance must be provided in writing to the coach and sports official before the athlete can return to participation. There are a few forms we need to review with you. After watching this video, both parents and youth athletes must sign a form stating that they have received and reviewed the information about sudden cardiac arrest. You will need to do this each year for each athletic activity in which the youth participates. Parents and student athletes participating in interscholastic sports programs offered in Ohio's secondary schools that require a pre-participation evaluation we remind you to sign the Sudden Cardiac Arrest Information Form, which is included there. As we conclude this presentation, we wish all youth athletes safe, successful, and enjoyable participation in their athletic activities.